not fresh enough. Welcome to the show. I'm so excited for tonight's show. I've got the most incredible guests um, with me. Let's start at the very end with an iconic South African singer who has uh, your biggest hit, My African Dream, has been covered by everybody and everyone who covers it has been a hit. It is the sensational Vicky Sanson. <laughs> middle and our only gentleman this evening is another iconic South African, a trailblazer in the stand-up comedy scene in South Africa, one of the pioneers actually of stand-up comedy uh, in the country, Kurt Schoenreich. Yeah. And right next to me we have a multi-award winning I don't even want to call you an actress because you are a multi-award winning and multidisciplinarian thespian and broadcaster. So what? Act theater, yes. television, yes. movies, radio, radio yes. TV yes. presenting, <laughs> coaching, voice coaching, wow. lecturing. <laughs> I don't like, just remember, remember, it's Lenita Crawford. <laughs> Let's start with you, Lenita, because yes. you, um, speaking of all the awards, you yes. are back by very, very popular demand. Your show, um, Gertrude Stein and Companion, yes. is coming back to Cape Town, to Theatre on the Bay. It seems to get bigger and bigger, bigger theatres everywhere. Well, finally, we're bigger. in a proper theatre at last, you know, because yep. we started at the Alexander Bar, which was a proper theatre, but it was a tiny yeah. space that we worked in. Yeah. Um, and then we did go to Johannesburg to the Theatre on the Square, which was a large space. Yeah. But finally, in Cape Town, we're in a proper theatre space, which is very exciting. And you travelled internationally with yes, the show. Yes, we did. In 2019, just before just lockdown. Just before, <laughs> yeah, before it all shut down. We were lucky enough to be invited to the Dublin International Gay Theatre Festival, where we nice. performed the play there, yes. And one awards yes very um, nice <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> one uh, there was uh, <laughs> yes. uh, so you won um won awards in dublin yes i was the best performer award <laughs> very nice. you're, so, <laughs> you're so modest about it yeah i'll be like i won look at my statue <laughs> but, <Yeah>. but <laughs> you know, like yes <laughs> have statue will travel <laughs> speaking of how statue will travel you told me just before we start before we started the show about getting the award back. Yes, so the award was a statue of Oscar yeah. Wilde, and it was yeah. a very heavy statue. I don't know what it was made of, but and our luggage was completely full because we'd taken all our costumes yeah. and props across, and I thought, how am I going to bring this back? Because I thought, I can't have it in my hand luggage because they'll think it's a weapon. You know, you could yeah. knock somebody yeah. over the head. Yeah, so you and can't I even bring a lipstick yeah, in I didn't want it to be confiscated. Yeah, no, so of course. But it was quite a mission, so what I had to put it in my, in my bag. Yeah, I had to go through my bag and squash it in there with all <laughs> the other things. <laughs> and the weight of the bag, did they...? It was fine. It was, okay, it was fine, right. yeah. L uh, listen, if it's an award, I would have thrown out the shoes. Shoes, <laughs> yeah. bra, don't that's need you. That's the first time that's ever happened. <laughs> oh, a yeah. woman admits to one to throw out the shoes for any reason. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? I'd love to see that I'm happen. Really listen, happy. no, but I am generally a barefoot girl anyway. Like you could have fooled us. Eh? Barefoot or tackies, <laughs> except, well, the tonight. Pants beautiful. Beautiful. Pumps there, that doesn't look like you are. It's my one pair of, that, well, I've got a few pairs. Listen, do you know what? I'm a size nine. So, yeah, no, Vicky's wow. like, <gasps> well, I can fit into those. I was going to say so, Kurt. I was going to say it. I Listen. I took both my arms. I have to go <laughs> to my drag sisters to borrow shoes <laughs> because my, my feet are so big. So, it's it, like, they know, and it's only recently in the last, you know, quite recently that they've started doing ladies' shoes in size nine. So my matric dance, I wore tackies because I was—I just couldn't find shoes, and eventually I was so like. You were ahead I of your time wearing tackies. Ahead of my time, people were horrified at the time. I was like, I don't care, and you know, yeah, it was put like with an attitude of, oh, what? I just can't find them. You should ask the mince guys where they shop for their yes. shoes. I'm pretty sure they would have. Yes. Clive well, would have sorted you out there. Yeah. yeah. Listen, the mince guys come to me. Can we stick some sweet on the <laughs> <laughs> your water skis? But um, yeah, no. But so the award, you got them back, and then you won an award yes. in Joburg. 
Then we performed well. in Joburg, and yeah. uh, then we shared the award, because it's a two-hander. Yes. The play yeah. is about the two characters, Gertrude Stein and Alice B. Toklas. Yeah. And then we shared the award, the Naledi Award, which was also, uh, we got in 2020. Couldn't go to Joburg to the red carpet and get it, because oh. it was locked down. Yeah. So, unfortunately not. The next award you'll be there, we'll tell them, Yes. do some in Cape Town. <laughs> we'll get, get something in Cape Town. What? Um, ooh, is that me? Ooh, there's a whale somewhere in the ooh. bay going, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's it's me. It's <laughs> what? Um, so lockdown, obviously. I mean, we've all had a bit of a a bit of a shutdown <laughs> during lockdown. Yeah. Vicky, you have seemed quite. I mean, I think it's just possibly on social media, but it seems like you've been quite busy because you've got um, duets coming out and collaborations Ooh. and yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know what, Fiona, it's actually since before lockdown began, um, because I'm president of the Trade Union for Musicians of South Africa. And so, so that has taken up a lot of the time over the last two years. And we've been um, in litigation, actually, with the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture. Sort we them out them, there, Vicky. We, we took them to court because of the, the disastrous first wave of relief that went so awry. And, not half, I mean, three quarters of the, the artists never got access yeah. to that money because it was so complicated. So Timsa Affairs has taken over a lot. We've been busy with a copyright amendment bill in between, um, which the president then returned. Um, we are now busy with a new portfolio committee to get certain clauses there. Our main thing is the three certain clauses, uh, clauses within the copyright amendment bill, which is directly linked towards our heritage and culture, the support of the creative industry within South Africa by business, by government, etc., by radio, by media. Um, so that has taken up pretty much of our time over, over this period, and there hasn't been much work. But it's been a creative period also because somehow I managed last year to get into studio twice. Yeah. And I recorded the Mark Lottering song, uh, This Isn't Enough, which was geared towards gender-based violence issues, essentially. Um, sadly, uh, we didn't get a lot of radio support, hence, you know, the problem uh, that we're facing in, in South Africa. Um, and then I got into studio after that with, with my partner. We were partner in an NPC called Mzansi Many Roots One Tree. Um, we put together 45 young people and created a beautiful show called Mzanti Many Roots One Tree. Yeah. Kids from across the, the Cape Flats, all colors, all sizes, all, all uh, disciplines. And um, Nini, she composed two songs for me. One is called, uh, it's the new one is about to be released now on the 12th of February. It's called Song of Love. And then my first Afrikaans song. So. Um, I'm excited because we, she's busy writing a new one for me as a follow-up to Song of Love. So in the midst of the chaos and the frustration and the, yeah. all the stress about how do I pay the rent, how do I survive, yeah. being put out of your place, having your phone yeah. to take in, you know, I mean, all these things we've been yeah. going through, all of us. You, you, you're touching on something there, and I think maybe this is an opportunity to share this because most, the average human being, bless your cotton socks, <laughs> whoever's watching, <laughs> Well, it's, it's a little different when you're an artist yeah. in that um, you almost always require an audience, perhaps not even live, but you need an audience all the time. And you operate in that space, whether you're a vocal artist, a stage artist, a stand-up comedian, et cetera, et cetera. And the last two years has completely changed the way we do business. Yeah. I mean, and I'd, I'd hate to, to bring out all the dark stuff here, but we know mm -hmm. of um, musicians that have sold their instruments to make ends meet. Yeah. We've, we've heard of, you know, how many venues have closed down over the last two years. Um, but there seems to be, and I'll, I'd like to end the, the, the sentence on a, on a bit of a positive spin, because there seems to be a little resurgence of yeah. the art form mm -hmm. coming back again, all of them yeah. in fact. Yeah. There's a, there, I've, I've been getting more inquiries, I haven't booked many Maybe. gigs, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I've been getting more inquiries, which is a good, it's a, it's well, a great start to all of yeah. that, you know. Did you do, the corporate gigs on Zoom. Man, it was the no. cuckest thing oh. I've ever done. Have you? <laughs> Have you really? I've done so many of them. And you know when on you it's, Zoom. it's you know comedy re requires a bit of ta-da at the end, yeah. you know? Yeah, and the punchline, ta-da and Nix, nothing, nothing. <laughs> just, just dead air. You know, I don't know if it's hitting home, I don't know if it's not hitting home. And stand and up works. Everybody's gone to sleep. And everyone's gone. Yeah. Oh, your Zoom session has just ended. All by myself. <laughs> 
at one stage <laughs> I was doing one of these one man stuff, you know, yeah. where, um, and, <laughs> and my son walked past in the background, who was about 12, went, Dad, that's not funny. <laughs> I'm like, that's <laughs> <laughs> Listen, kids. You know, people watching you, people, for crying out loud, you know? <laughs> but, um, Kids will do that though. There's nothing quite like your kids to bring you. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> to like nip that ego. No, what you do it's never ever tune your kids to lie. Okay? Yeah. And when I say that, I mean that fib. That's a great euphemism for lie, because I wouldn't teach him to do anything. It's just like, tell them I'm not here. <laughs> <laughs> tell him I'm not here. My papa says he's not no, here. I've, yeah. Yeah. I've heard that you, with you, mine. You, you, they're gonna reach an age where they understand what a good lie is, you know. Oh, sorry, a fib. The problem is, first they do it like, Mom said she's not here. Ha 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 ha. Give me the phone. <laughs> and then, but then when they do understand it, it's even funnier for them. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's usually is not the phone. Is my mom here? <laughs> it's more like um, the sheriff of the court. Really, that <laughs> my light schemes, John Wayne is still alive. The sheriff's been around so often. <laughs> <laughs> It's true, eh? It's a cock joke there, I'm just sorry. I was going to say, is no, that, is that's that really you? not a joke, <laughs> not in my front. The sheriff was really at my house, guys. Yeah. But do you know like what? Like, year before last, September, it happened to me. Yeah. Yeah. No, with COVID, yeah. it has actually happened to a lot. I mean, you say about musicians yeah. selling um, yeah. selling guitars and things. I had to sell my record. <laughs> you sell your records, no? Records. Yeah. Yes. Just, I want to put it in perspective. Know, I used to be a club DJ, and I have this huge... Oh obviously vinyl, thing of vinyl, vinyl of funky house vinyl. first edition funky house you vinyl you me first dips on that oh, oh yeah. i was like and, and then i just this guy in durban obviously saw a really good deal and was like yeah i'll take that and i was like and yeah. then and then i wanted to sell the whole thing and then it's a big and he's like no 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 pick and choose all the bit i was like okay. so well, how big was your collection fiona it was it was sort of a couple hundred records and now it's oh. um so there's a few there's a few of the shit ones left <laughs> Is but I sent them, I sent them, like, I packed them all up, and I was like, please take care of them. <laughs> so, yeah. thankfully, he I is a, imagine. you know, obviously, is, I mean, I think people who still play vinyl love vinyl and love yeah. all the art form of mixing live oh, as opposed yeah. to, you know, digital mixing. I do so believe that they printed yeah. more vinyl last year than they have in, like, 40 years or something. So yeah. there's clearly it's a, a big surge demand. It is coming and back. demand for it's it, and they wouldn't do it if there was. In fact, cassettes are being printed as well. <gasps> So uh, get no, your don't. old tape deck out. No, don't do the cassettes for me. <laughs> that That's winding with a pencil, winding, 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 winding. Everybody <laughs> is like retro drunk. So I'm pretty sure there'll be all kinds of stuff coming back. You Just know. not the cassettes. Please, please, please. There it is. I will. There's nothing like no cassettes, cassette, man. It's no, that brilliant. ripping and then... You remember putting the, stretch the, stretch the, the stretch pencil stretch. in when it... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then it breaks and you <laughs> sell it, tape it out, sell it, tape it out. <laughs> I'm very hot. I'm sorry. I must. I'm not. It I'm is very we know I'm not you're hot. You, you are hot. hot. You are hot. You are I'm hot. hot up here, it's the guys. lights. We like are boiling. We are. So yes. if you are, <laughs> if you are watching at home, uh, we are shooting live from the Boca Creative Studio in Seapoint in Cape Town, and we are in the bit of middle of a heat wave like we were last week. So if we all look a bit shiny, yeah. it's um. It's um, not a word. It glowing. Is. We're glowing. We're glo I'm We're sweating. Glowing. <laughs> <laughs> I was in um, I was in Paul yesterday. Oh, oh. why would you do and that? Just place. No, no, I was my, my son's into in downhill park. cycling, so there was oh. a big event there yesterday. Yeah. And I swear, you know, everybody was trying to find a tree, and there's <laughs> not a lot of trees <laughs> near the tall monuments, you know. Oh no. But um, yeah, it was. Paul was the hottest place on the planet yesterday. Apparently, Paul yeah. officially. Paul officially. Yeah, it was uh, like 46 degrees. Even um, Dubai was like a, um, not cold. Nice they and were chilled colder compared, cold to compared to Paul. Yeah. I actually, I'm glad you brought <laughs> your son up. Yeah. Because I was going to ask you about the downhill. Yeah. How nerve-wracking is it for you? Because I've seen those pictures. I mean, Kurt's son does, what do you, I mean, what is it even called? Downhill? It's downhill. Uh, and, and like it's cycling. Like, was it, no, it's, it's motorbiking. No, it's, it's cycling, but yeah. it's, um, it's on very special machines. And, they, yeah. and there's a lot of jumps. You know, yeah, like these, can you see these photos yeah. of him? Looks like and he's 20 only meters up, exactly, 20 yeah. meters up in the air. It's funny because I grew up in Botswana and I did horse riding, and we used to ride these mad horses and like gallop across uh, through the bush over fences. And my mother used to freak out and be like, Don't be fit. I saw your kid and I was like, Oh, I've turned into my mom. No, but I give him a speech. I was, I was freaked out <laughs> on your behalf. I give him a speech like every time he goes yeah. on that bike. Firstly, I dress him like the Michelin man, so he's got like claw pads <laughs> and a full face helmet, yeah, yeah. and then I go, Okay, don't forget, my boy, we only got a hospital plan. Off you go. <laughs> <laughs> so 
if you're gonna if you're gonna fall and hurt yourself, do it proper. Yeah, yeah just you know, break it lacquer, like eat nicely. We want to be like a full. No yeah. fractures. No, we want to be. It's either brought into hospital. You're either yeah. spending the night or two. Yeah. Or we're not going into A and E for stitches. No, 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 no <laughs> stitches. I will stitch. I'll staple it together in the, from the car. It works. Oh, no, it works. Absolutely. Super glue, apparently. Super. That's what super glue was invented for. You super know. Super glue. Surgery. Listen, when I was a kid, I used to get brought to the vet. The vet. <laughs> fall yeah. Off. yeah, for stitches. You fall off. The best person for stitches is a vet. And then the carrot at the end. Yeah. Thank you. No. Okay. <laughs> so why the long face? <laughs> You have a new, a new occupation. <laughs> Step away, Kurt. <laughs> Listen. He sorted that one out. There. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Ta-da! Punchline. <laughs> Listen, Kurt. When you do comedy nights, you've got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Vicky's diversifying. Di what is it? Diversifying her portfolio. I'll put my comedy, and then she'll have punchline will be a fantastic song at the end. Exactly. Yes. You don't stand a chance. <laughs> or just be like, hey? Not just a sweaty hard face. <laughs> <laughs> so no, but how do you feel when you see him in the he's Man, literally airborne? I'm so proud of him. Um he is he's just he's just winning everything. You know, he's yeah. he's, he's, he's we got a big trophy cabinet at eleven years old already. Nice. Wow. And um he wants to go pro. And wow. um how do I say this nicely, you know? Um it's expensive. I yeah. think a cocaine habit would have been cheaper. You know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't ever suggest. I'm just saying, though. Just yeah. it's a, 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 a comparative. I don't know if you folks know this, but nowadays there is a West Bank guy sitting in a bicycle shop uh? willing to finance your bicycle. <laughs> no, really. really? You, yeah. you, a, a VW Polo, brand new, is cheaper than some of the bikes. Wow. Wow. No, really. 240000 oh for a bike. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For the mountain bikes. So he needs three different bikes because he's got oh he does wow. dirt jumping and then there's another one called a downhill bike and then there's a cross country bike, an XC bike. Okay. So each discipline requires a different bike because they do different oh things my word. and they have different strengths and weaknesses and stuff. And thank God his his, his grandmother um, sends a lot of cash to help him. Pounds. 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 From Germany. Yeah. Euros, 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 thank God, that's euros, that's, yeah. and I go, thank God for the Umi there, because she just goes, so what else does he need? I'm <laughs> <laughs> padding. <laughs> padding, <laughs> lots of padding. padding, we don't need a hospital plan, remember. Yeah. What yeah. is your son's name? My son's name's Jack. Jack. Yeah, Jack Scudnrod, he's, uh, you must Google him, eh? he's doing very well, and so he, he took us, uh, he, he, he raced in, the, in a um, higher category for the first time yesterday. And so we didn't expect him to get anywhere because the, the it's the pretty competitive and yeah. there's boys twice his size. And he, he got a podium, he was third place. Wow. wow. So I was wow. like, Go wow. nice. Jack, go. Listen. I would show you some videos, but it's just some school deluxe in the background. Keep going, go Jack, go Jack. <laughs> Take a while, guess who that was. Yeah. <laughs> the loud, loud guy in the background is like, even the commentator's like, no, you know. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Can't you get a gig commentating? Actually, I, I, someone got sick once and I had to fill in over there, you know? And oh, I, really? And then and I got fired the same day. Oh, no. Um, What's it the swearing? It's not so funny when people fall, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, no. uh, I'm also not allowed to say, whoa, that's got to hurt anymore. <laughs> uh, no. So all of those are all arts. Yeah, yeah. That's not cool. No, no. I would prefer it if someone be, you know, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. If I was lying there with a broken arm, I'd want to be, you know, something make me happy. Laughing while it's going. Laugh through my pain. There are obalis as well. There's like categories for like what veteran men, I think it's called. It's a nice euphemism for obali, because I think I would have torpies. Torpies, yeah. Yeah. And they just go at half the pace than everyone else, you know. And you can understand why. They go down hill with the brakes on. Because you know, at our age, the back wheel locked all the way down. So that our age bones don't break, they shatter. Yeah, so you, it's, it's fine, it's like Humpty Dumpty, it's harder and harder to put together again, you know? That's why I swim these days, yeah. not, uh, not cycling anymore. Yeah, swimming's lekker, you can, if you fall, you st you're still okay. Listen, <laughs> no, no, listen, don't even joke, because I am probably the clumsiest bitch you're ever going to meet. In fact, oh. I'm sure you've seen me falling over <laughs> many times. Yeah. Not because I was drunk, just because I'm very clumsy. But um, that's your story, and you're sticking with it. Right. <laughs> no, but everywhere, everyone goes. Everything to do with on those size nine shoes you're wearing. So size nine. Believe it or not, 
believe it or not, I'm better. It's weird. I'm better in high heels. It's flat shoes where I'm just like, oh. I think it's because you you think about it. Yeah. You think about where you're walking. When yeah, I no, know I'm a tricky can, thing. Just like, ah, fall over. So um, yeah, swimming. I'm fine. I can't. It's, it's there's no way to break fall. Anybody. And you know, I'm like six foot tall. So when you fall, it's not like people yeah, don't notice. Yeah, that's quite a height to fall from. Timber. Gotta break something if you fall. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, we are going to take a break. Uh, a, so that everyone in the audience, our fabulous audience, <laughs> so that everyone in the audience can I can have a drink, and so that my fabulous guest can actually, we can get step away from the lights and have a bit of a mop up. What do you? A <laughs> dab a, down. Get some fresh air. So please uh, stay tuned, or come back. We're back in about 15 minutes. Do not go away. Yes. Morris Merlinson's mind swirled with ideas. So, what's the story, Morris? But it was never the right time to share his work. The demand was only a distraction. Darling, just share. Dad, I have a story. With innovation as his only destination, he set off for new discoveries, a land of uncharted stories. idea was worth sharing until he had redefined perfection. <laughs> but the perfect discovery had left him behind. Hey, you look like you've been on a journey. So what's your story? For exceptional ideas are meant to be shared.
Welcome back to Fiona Fury and Friends, coming to you live from the Boca Creative Studio in Seapoint, Cape Town. So if you hear a buzz and things happening, it's because uh, Seapoint is very vibey and we've got the doors open so people can walk past and that's what the noise is. I've also got an amazing audience. <laughs> I love audiences. Right, let's get back to our guest, Vicky Sampson, if you're just tuning in. Vicky Sampson, Woo! yes. Yeah. Kurt Schoonrad. Yeah. And Lenita Crawford. Yeah. Now, I've been told to sit still. Apparently, the whole way through the first one, I was... You were bobbing, Louise. My Don't usual. Sit still. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, if you are watching at home and wondering, what is she doing? Sorry, it's... <laughs> and in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, Kurt. Yes, sir. You're in the hot seat. We're going to start back with you. Wow, well, thanks. You have been busy with movies. Um, I've had the pleasure of... Sh you know, it's the weirdest thing because some of it was shot just before lockdown. Some of it was shot during lockdown. But none of it was released until like a month ago. Sure. So it seems like you've been so busy, but actually... Well, what it was is, of course, as you could well imagine, these folks have spent a lot of money trying to produce this, yeah. and they want to get the best quality audience they can, and it's very difficult if um, you're trying to release a movie, for example. It's not the kind of thing you want to do to the general public off the bat. Um, these go to the movie houses first, or they get yeah. released on, on platforms like Netflix or Showmax. Yeah. So they'd want to keep it back and so that they can get the best publicity run they can, mm. pre-show, a pre-movie, and then um, get as much audiences, um, bums on seats. But what's it called? Yeah. Um, the one's yeah. called um, Material, yeah. which was uh, Riyad Musa's sequel. Is that I was going to say, that's yeah. a, another one. That is another one. It's yeah. a sequel. And then there was Taya Tali's Baby Diary. Was, uh, oh, yeah. Yes. I'm going to play a corrupt Cape Town official, like we need to say <laughs> corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to play a Cape Town official <laughs> who was <laughs> open to all kinds of persuasion. Ah. <laughs> So nice. Do you see what I did there with a euphemize? Yes, <laughs> euphemize. <laughs> can you spell that? Yes, I can. You P B L. <laughs> I'm a dyslexic. I know your spelling is like mine. We have that's <laughs> something Kurt and I have in common is our, our uh, creative spelling. Yeah, we'll put it fine. that way. Which means we just <laughs> cock at spelling. <laughs> Which means we are very cock at spelling. So, so material. Yes. A second one. Was that based in Joburg? It was. It yeah. was based in Joburg. And um, there was a, a big comedy cast. I mean, yeah, I mean, Joey it was the Rose heavy hitters. Um, uh, Skulk the Sadness, um, of course, Driad, um, and a lot of cameos by other comedians. Yeah. Um, Dylan Willifant popped in for a moment. Dave Levinson played a, a dentist. Um, <laughs> there, was, there was a lot of comedians on, on set in yeah. any given day. Yeah. So it was cool to be involved. Like so did you yeah. direct it? Then? No, no, not at all. I was. I just played a cameo. I got to play a, um, a guy called a character called Gaten Silver, who was trying to convince Riyad Musa to not listen to his parents. Oh I was right. the devil, as it were. You were the so devil. The proverbial devil. Nice. Yeah. Which is a great character to play. It's not a nice guy at all. You know. <laughs> oh, they're so much more fun. Indeed, the baddies are, are so yes. much more. It's just you know. It's lekker. I enjoyed it yeah. thoroughly. Yeah. Riyad yeah. does that. I mean, I think within the sort of creative scene in Cape Town, you very much got to start doing your own thing. And that's yeah. what you do, Lenita, as well. We were talking about it last week, actually, yeah. about um, why you did Gertrude Stein and Companion. Yeah, it, it was that thing about finding a project that I really wanted to do. You know, because you, you reach that stage in your life where there aren't that many parts available to you anymore. Mm. So you think, well, I want to do something. I still mm. want to perform. Yeah. And um, somebody suggested this play, Gertrude Stein and the Companion, and there were two fabulous parts two for strong women, really yeah. lovely roles for women. Yeah. And that's why, um, I, what interested me in the project, you yeah. know? And that's why I decided to do it. But it's been tough because it means you've got to kind of produce it yourself. You've got to find the venues. It's, it's mm. hard work. You I know what it's tons. like. Yeah. You know, you yeah. hit the nail right on the head there. Because what most people don't get about producing it is it's also a thankless job. Absolutely. Yeah. Because if you're on stage, you're the, you're the, the actress and you're the, the main and it's fantastic. And you get all of the applause at the end of it. But nobody gives you a round of applause for massaging all of the egos. And try to get on every radio interview you can. Yeah. Try handing out flyers to some oak who doesn't want it. Putting it in some other oak. Like, 
wipe a thing. Yeah. Or just even phoning your friends a million times to say, are you going to come and see my play? <laughs> <laughs> and they've all seen it about five times, but they're coming yeah. again to the yeah. theatre on the bed. Please come to my show. So, yeah, where would yes. we be without the support of our friends? That's well, listen, friends. that's where I am today. Please come to my show. <laughs> but it's, no, but it's that thing, like you said, with them. Um, I mean, also, when we get to a certain age, um, I mean, I've just got quite recently back into, you know, both... Um, you know, broadcasting like this, but also into acting. And uh, it's very much like, oh, you can, do you know what we can send you for is the young grandma roles. <laughs> I was like, exactly. what? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a smart kid who's seven years old, like young grandma. And I was like, I was, well, you know my agent, Nick. I was like, what? <laughs> and he was like, calm down, darling. Well, the thing is with your age, I'm <laughs> <laughs> at your age. It is, but it is that thing, I suppose, like at our age, we've got to start actually, you know, someone's laughing at me. Yes. Well, I had, I had a really I'm nearly 50, you know. And I don't, don't worry, Fiona. So, uh, sorry, but yes. it, we, it happens to all of us. It's, yeah. it's not exclusive to the Does it happen space. at your age oh, too? All the time as well. Like, uh, you can do the young grandpa thing. You know, like, <laughs> oh, no. you know, with your beard, you can go for Santa maybe next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So it, it happens to all of us. Sorry. Yeah. No, I was going to say, I had yeah. a rude awakening on Facebook the other day because somebody posted a picture of when I played Cinderella when I was 22. <laughs> <laughs> and, like and now I'm playing an aged lesbian at the <laughs> age of... <laughs> Listen, is Cinderella. I'm just Cinderella. Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I yes. have been, but jokes, I mean, like, I've been rolling up since since I turned 45. I've been going, hey, listen, I'm nearly 50. Have some respect. There was some punk tried to push in front of me at the bank one day. And I, I'd literally you just... See, now you can use the I word punk, there, punk. You know, right? Hey, now we know punk. that you We know that I'm nearly... 50, that gives, right. a, it gives the game away. <coughs> but listen, I called him punk. There was two people much the older queue. than me standing in the queue, and then me, and this kid comes in, yeah, yeah, I'm in a rush, oh, yeah, and tried to push in. I was like, hey, hey. And the, the two people felt uncomfortable, the elderly people, and I thought, no, I'm not going to. Hey, punk! <laughs> Get in the back of the queue, have some respect, I'm nearly 50. And, they were like, <laughs> and the two old people in front were like, D and then they looked at me, and, I, and they both burst out laughing. But anyway, I've been doing it since then, though. I mean, I'm only, I've still got a few years to go, but I'm still going there. I'm nearly 50, you know. Oh. It sounds more impressive than, okay, now I'm 48, but... It sounds more impressive yeah. if you roll up and people go, God, yeah. you look great. That's Instead of if you go, actually, I'm in my early 40s and that poor bitch has had a really hard life. <laughs> <laughs> so and it's also <laughs> harder to hear it in Afrikaans. It has a different effect. How do you say it in Afrikaans? Tani. They would know. Oh, oh, yeah, tani. Yeah, All yeah, of a yeah. sudden, yeah. they just put tani. You're like almost 60 when you're tani. tani you know? yeah. <laughs> it's, or um. Tani. It's, it yeah. just doesn't. Um? It's, it's cringeworthy. You know? Tani, yeah. I've been getting, I've be, I'm not going to lie, I've, I've been getting the tannies, which I'm just like, okay, all right. Then but I'll apparently it's a sign of respect. Yeah. Afrikaans yeah. people do that. They call yeah. Even when you're 25, they start saying tani. That's true. Oh, That's okay. Because I got tani when my, th the first That's time it happened, okay. I was in my 30s, and I was like, what? Yeah. They're being respectful. And when they call me tani, I'm like, I should get out of the Shirley Bassey truck. You'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> you'll be like that you've that was, you've had a hard life if you're a lady who looks like that. Yeah, <laughs> tiny. That's that tiny. Circus yeah. is all over the world. <laughs> though, you know, yeah. no, you're, the, do you find things get lost in translation? Do you do comedy? Yeah. Do you take your show on the road? You've done all comedy all overseas. Time, yeah, yeah. Do you find overseas, when you're doing shows in other countries, a lot of the stuff gets lost in oh, translation? A lot of it. You, it, what it the I will never forget the first time it was um, at the Bangkok Comedy Festival with wow. like... English comedians and American comedians and I just cocked it up on my way onto stage. I was like, hey, how's it? How's it? Yeah. And then I remember everyone goes, doesn't you know what work as it means. Yeah. So I've got to retrack everything. And you've got yeah, to sure. and you you'll be surprised how much slang or colloquial kind of language you have in your set. Because yeah. I go, as it my boo, and you can't do that there. No. So you gotta retool your whole machine to get out. So the first night was quite shit actually. And then <laughs> from the second night, it got better, you know, it got better. Yeah. And also, there's, we, we assume everybody can understand what we're saying at a pace. Because, yeah. you know, stand up is like anything else. You, you yeah. speed up and you slow down. You've got yeah. and flow. Um, flow, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're trying to set up, you tend to do it more slowly. Mm. Then they yeah. get what you're saying. But as soon as you speed up, and when I get comfortable, I speed up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you've got to, you just got to retool all of that. And it takes quite a bit of getting used to it, does. Do you know something you did? I was thinking about it, obviously, when I'm, you know, researching the show. Because I do research, believe it or not. Just, <laughs> 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 stop laughing. <laughs> the audience is like, ah! 
no. But when I, I was going through, you know, you know, thinking in my, getting my head in the in the game, but um, you very much were the first person to to really be yourself and bring kind of cape coloured to comedy. And because yeah. I feel, I mean, I've been a comedy fan for a long time, and I've known you a long time. But it used to be when in the beginning there wasn't that much stand up around. First of all, yeah. but everyone doing stand up was trying to be very American, so yeah. like everything is American-y yeah. or a bit British, and everyone was trying to be like almost import stand up yeah. from somewhere else. They almost had they were trying to emulate somebody else. Yes, right. you were the first comedian in the country, I think, who came out as unapologetically this is who I am and this is where I'm from. And actually it's opened a massive thing because then from there, everyone suddenly is who they are from. I, I think I'll, I can, if I can explain it, yes. I, Bonita heard exactly what I said earlier. I've just got the cuckest American accent you've ever <laughs> heard. That's, uh, yeah. <coughs> I couldn't do that. Also, I find out that um, honesty is a big part of mm. the formula for stand-up. So if I come out there and I go, um, hi, I'm Kurt and I'm from Mitchell's Plain, it immediately picture frames what it is, where I'm from, what I do, how yeah. I say it. And um, I've never been afraid of that. And I think a lot of it was initially at the start of stand-up comedy, there was a lot of imports coming into, into South Africa, English acts, American acts. Mm -hmm. And there was almost a disassociation with the South African culture there. Because we didn't think we were good enough to share stories of, about South Africa and stuff. And I was like, I don't have any other story. So I just told mine the best I could, and comedy is about timing and getting your point across. Yeah. And if it's done with, with with any sort of love and understanding, I think people will get it. You know, and yeah. I was lucky that they got it. But also, you g gave people a mirror to look into and laugh at. Yeah. And it started. I mean, this you know, Joe Berg. Now everyone is. You know, all the comedians are very like we're real. We're from the hood. Everyone's got their own. You know, no one would even dream about putting on a fake accent anymore. No, no. And I don't think people realize that you opened the door for that. Well, that's that's very kind of you. Um, I, I do think that there were other acts at the time that were doing a, a similar thing to myself. Um, Stuart Taylor, one of them. Yeah. Um, Mark was also just yeah. un unapologetically Cape Townian as well. But I, I, I know there what you mean. There's a small group of you, you though, that's... Yeah. That but in, 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 in this conversation happening, I'm so glad it is happening because, you know, I think there is still a huge identity crisis amongst mm. the so-called colored people of this country. Because yep. many of us still feel like we don't quite belong here. We're not sure where we, we'd rather be, but we'd rather be in America on those sitcoms yeah. or whatever it is. We'd rather yeah. be a character from there yeah. than be ourselves because that is, I suppose, that is what has been portrayed. We have been portrayed as a certain face of this country but so we wish that this kind of thing that's happening in yeah. comedy to be honest take it will happen will transcend to music in South Africa yeah. mm -hmm. to the young people out there who are composing who are um, writing their own lyrics and things that they will start identifying yeah. with the communities we have yeah. like brilliant guys like Jitzfinger and we have um, um, Craig O you know that youngster yeah. CPT, youngster CPT. These, I think this is what it is is this is you know, when you're an artist and you're trying to, to express yourself, it's, it's about embracing who you are yeah. and not being anyone else. And what I did at the very beginning was, was kind of because my, my, my wife is German and um, I'm unapologetically Cape Townian, yeah. colored. Mm. And I would compare how we both cock up the English language in different ways, <laughs> you know, because we do. Mm. And, you know, it's, I'll give you a small example. The colored people, we've got a problem with singulars and plurals, yeah. you know. You go, in the morning you go, hellos. <laughs> that's Mornings. plural, that's like, that's that for the whole Hello. week or just today? Mornings. 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 Mornings, but it's the same person that goes, oh, you got a nice shoe. Yeah. <laughs> I like your pants. I like your jean pants. <laughs> you got a nice shoe, nice jean. <laughs> and now the, the German people, they got a problem with the V and the W. They switch them around. Yeah. I, I want, why are you vaping? <laughs> I'm not feeling good, I want to warm it. <laughs> So and now, yet they came up with VW cars. They came up with the, they were the ones themselves who came up with it. So I think what happens is yeah. this, is a, this is the thing about comedy is that if you embrace it and you, yeah. and you do it with a love and respect for the people that you're yes. playing to, if it's not malicious, 
Yeah. And this is what happens a lot of the time because it becomes, it's so easy to go color bashing out there. Oh I can yeah. go there and go, how do we, bro? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. not the what, no. what I'm talking no, about. No, because there are so many stories to tell and there's, there's, there's a space for it now. Yeah. There's, the world is watching us, let's face it. And mm -hmm. I mean, for me, one of the greatest things that has come out of this pandemic is the fact that now, because our audiences have always been dodgy. South African audiences have always, <laughs> sorry guys, with all the Sorry love. guys, it's you. They've always been dodgy. Our they've audience is agreeing. They've it's you guys. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> you guys. They've always Thanks. kind of been leaning, and maybe because we've all been, you know, a bit brain damaged by the past, yeah. Yeah. that we are not good enough, that we are not funny enough, that we are not great enough. And, and so we've always leaned towards America and the rest of the world. Mm. And I think now, for me, that is what's happened with, with COVID, is that mm. the social, uh, well, with uh, this virtual audience, yeah. the virtual space, the world is now listening and watching mm. us. Yeah. You know, it's also, w w what, what, what has changed a lot for me is that I was very lucky to travel quite young in my life. Mm. Yeah. And then somehow you lose this inferiority complex. Yeah. You, f you find out that people are the same all over the world, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Good, bad, ugly, green, orange, red, purple. It, we all have similar attributes. We all have the similar um, inferiority complexes, yes. superiority complexes. Yeah. We all have the same fears, the same likes, the same dreams. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it should be mandatory for every young South African to travel. Yeah. Get out of your comfort zone, get out of South Africa, go and check it out, go and hike through Southeast Asia, sure. go to Europe. Mm -hmm hike your way through it. Okay, it's a little harder to do since 911, you know, as a color of, but um, <laughs> <laughs> with a but beard, it depends, know, you know. <laughs> They say it depends, depends what country you, you want to go to. Out of the rating. Just don't try America. Don't get on that plane. Uh, they're also going to tune me even somewhere in like Holland. Like, hello, um, like, you know, okay, but that changed my life, that, that, that traveling space yes. and getting to understand, oh, there's no mom and dad to call when the cuck hits the fan, yeah. you know? And yeah. you find out a lot about yourself, about humankind, yeah. and I don't think I would have had the energy or the power or even the s just the, the will to start stand-up comedy had I not traveled. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it was a very, very important catalyst for me to do what I did. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Vicky, speaking of you know art that represents, your music definitely does. I mean, I, okay, obviously everyone always goes to you, My African Dream, because it's everyone's favorite song. So um, it's mine too. But it's yours. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it always, I've met, said to you before a long time ago, it always makes me think, um, speaking to you about My African Dream, it's so iconic. It's like mm. speaking to Dan McLean about American Pie. Yeah. It's that, but um, it is such an, a, a beautiful, iconic song. It is. Um, yeah. And it is, you know, when we're talking about, you know, representing our communities, ourselves. our country, ourselves, yeah. that song is what it's all about. Yeah. So it, if, I, if I may interject, it's like, <coughs> it's like a cultural landmark. Yeah. You know, it's, it, 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 it equates, it equates to, 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 to a lot. I mean, my, you know, I think music um, tickles us in all different kinds of ways. But that, that song particularly has a very... Mm. Um, it's iconic. Iconic, but also there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a spirit to it that is difficult to kind of put into words yeah. yeah because it happened at a very specific time I mean I actually recorded that entire album was recorded in London I spent seven weeks in London recording it the demo of my African dream was done here mm -hmm. and then we went over and I actually worked with a guy that used to produce for soul to soul and he was one of the founding members of soul to soul uh, Will Mowat and he produced that album mm -hmm. but the song at the time it was like just just after democracy. Did you write? Yeah. Did you write after. the song as well yourself? Pardon? Did no, you write? I didn't compose oh, did you not compose? It was composed by Alan Lazar, Mango oh, Groove. Oh. And he's written some of the biggest Mango Groove songs. Yeah. But so, African Dream was literally recorded in the beginning stages of '95, mm -hmm. and it was released in October '95. Mm -hmm. So everybody also also got confused that they were under the impression that I sang that song at the World Cup, the Rugby World Cup in '95. I did not. I was sitting in London recording that song. I then performed at the African Cup of Nations in 96. Ah, that's what the really confusion. Yeah. 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 But that is <laughs> thank you. <laughs> we won. Yeah. So that was the one that year. <laughs> the first time we won anything in a while. Yeah. <laughs> and so, I mean, I remember crying my eyes out in 95, sitting and watching the rugby, which we won yeah. Yeah. that year. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I wanted to be home so bad. But so for me, African Dream has opened so many doors. And, and it continues to do so, like nearly 27 years down the line. It's wow. been a blessing in my years. life. 
It that makes me feel so old. Wow. You, you, remember you, when you, you feel old, darling. No, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know when you remember something, it like it's quite recently, you know, we like yeah. wind tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, no, but you know when you remember something and it doesn't feel, it feels like, oh, 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. And you yeah, say 27, you go, oh, how old am I? I can't believe it. But it's and but also the nice some things age so well. You know? That's what I was going to say. Age, some things age yeah. so well where it doesn't have a, a time period yeah. Yeah. and you can enjoy yeah. it at any, yeah. sp any space 200 years from now. Yeah. Yeah. And then there are other things that come out next the next week and two weeks later, you're like, oh, that's all you got. That's that's so you're talking about you know? that, I mean, talking about like art. And there I was on Saturday, I was bored. I was just lying, trying to get cooled down, mm -hmm. just yeah. doing nothing. And I was like, what am I going to do? And I, I went to to YouTube, and I don't know why the songs, thank you for being a friend. The Golden oh, Girls. The Golden Girls. The Golden Girls. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I started, I, I just started watching it's all the Betty Golden White. Girls. I was watching oh, them as man. well. Who was that Maud character? Maud was Blanche. Uh, shit, man, she was the original Chandler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The original and, song. And she had that death, death <laughs> stare, <laughs> the death <laughs> stare. It was like Jones a combination it. between yeah. Helen Jones Ziller it. and like <laughs> Nathaniel. <laughs> Is that Blanche. what you got? She's Blanche. lovely, I love that. Sorry, I just kind of hijacked the story. No, <laughs> no, but I mean, that's the kind of, that's what we're talking about, you know? Yeah. Some yeah. things are just so great, that will never die. Iconic, mm. yeah. It's yeah. just so, yeah. it makes you feel good. And yeah. it, it, it will remind you of a place, of a time, of a person. Sometimes of a really cuck experience you had. <laughs> also, music can do that, you know? Yeah, okay. but can I give you an example? Please. Jagged Little Pearl. Oh. Yes. Elena Smara said, my oh. girlfriend broke up with me at the time. <laughs> yes, I, I wanted to slap myself. Like. So every time I hear that ironic song, I'm like, <laughs> Even though you got over I it want like a years ago. Nah, <laughs> hey? like that was It's like your trigger. But every time you hear the song, every time I hear the back. song, I'm Aina Gaming. I just want to call it Goose Up and Over. The magic of music, the power of music. It's so yeah. trigger that. Yeah. Yeah. Jagged little pull, ironically. <laughs> but the nice, <laughs> sorry, the nice thing about African Dream, I think the reason, it, one of the other reasons it stayed so fresh is it's been, are you crying again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a corner right now. <laughs> you're married, yeah, Kurt, you're married. Time, thank God. <laughs> oh, yeah, here man. we go. Again. Even my missus knows that story. You know. Kurt has <laughs> become the cry emoji. That <laughs> 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 Normally me who does I'm it. I'm becoming uh, the perspiration. The <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm the right up there with you. I I know. Know. They should have one like that. Is it because I'm nearly something with art, <laughs> with, art <laughs> oh, with your shoulders gosh, open and you don't sweat so much. No, I was going to say, I'm sorry, sweating. Please. No, no, no. It's <laughs> <laughs> I'm sweating as well. It's because I'm nearly 50. <laughs> 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 the struggle is real, I'm told. Uh, <laughs> so, no, I was saying about African Dream, the other thing, it's been covered and yeah. done so many so by so many people. And then, I mean, obviously, even Global Youth Choir brought yeah. it... That was, like, shocking. ...internationally I was, again. I was, I was sitting on a farm just an hour outside of Uppington, you know, with yeah. two great friends of mine, just, just chilling. I'd gone yeah. just to get a break. And on a Thursday morning, my phone rang at, like, 7.20. And I was like, God, who is this? This can't be good. And it's like some guy, Joba, that I haven't seen in many years, and he goes, says, Vicky, have you seen, have you heard? I'm like, huh, what? I, I don't know. I'm in Uppington. What's happening? He says, your song, African Dream, the Global Choir, just, they just made it through to the next round of America's Got Talent. Yeah. I tell you, I wow. was like, what? Wow. God I think they got like bounced through with it, didn't they? Well, they didn't even, didn't they get through, I don't know. Did what they the win? Th Did they win? No, they went all the way through to the final. Oh, okay. Yeah. They didn't. They didn't win it, but yeah. Th yeah. it was good enough. They, they went. How does that great feel? exposure. Wow. How does that feel? Now they're using your song in <laughs> America's Got Talent. Go, <laughs> <laughs> How are you watching that cockin'? <laughs> <laughs> I had to have a several smokes on. Yeah, there. I can imagine. Calm me down. Man, no, no. I think else, it was. Yeah. It was so exciting. They did it so beautifully. No, and I mean, I mean and this, the, your song got them through. I, mean, yes. I think it was your song because it's such a like feely, live, and the way they did it though was so beautiful. It, it brought a whole new life to the song, which yeah. is why I'm saying. And I have some very exciting news yeah. about African Dream this year. Yes, and hopefully you guys will see uh, hear it soon. But yeah. like I'm saying, this song just keeps evolving. Yeah, and and I mean, there can be no greater blessing than that for any given artist oh, in the true world. True story. A performer, yeah. a song, a, true a, a, story, a yeah. singer. 
to have one song that can carry you through nearly 30 years. That is, yeah. you know, so for, for, for thank you, to, yes. to inspire, you know? Yeah. And to, and to, so hence I some, and that's another sign of South Africans. We are clearly messed in the head, man, <laughs> because people will go, Oh gosh, is Vicky Sampson gonna sing my African dream again? <laughs> How many times yeah. must we hear this bloody song already? Damn, hasn't she got any new material? Uh, yes, my I've got Irish cousins of other love it. And that's that's to just to prove your point, yeah. My Irish cousin lives here and it's his absolute favorite song ever. Like I'm he loves it I so mean, much. Just and South know, Africans you know what you I mean? Know, it takes it takes foreigners to love it. It gives us goose flesh when you hear it, yeah. There are other examples of this. Um, in some of one of the greatest rock songs of all time is Stairway to Heaven, right? Yes. You are not allowed to play those chords in a guitar shop. Is it? It's it's like the unwritten rule. You go to the guitar shop and you start playing the three first three chords <laughs> of Stairway to Heaven, <laughs> someone will go a guitar at you. Why? Because everybody does Everybody does it. Does <laughs> everybody <laughs> does it. But it's so cool yeah. to have that. If I was a, 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 a vocal artist, yeah. I would love to have that one song that mm. everybody can relate exactly. to. Exactly. I mean, thousands yeah. of artists have created amazing material, but they, they never get it. Yeah. You know, they never yeah. get that break. So who am I to say, oh, I don't want to sing our African dream anymore. Did Aretha Franklin do that with... Uh, any of her songs? No. No. Did George Benson moan every time he had to do on Broadway? No. And yeah. no, no South African moans when they watch these international artists come here yeah. That's true. and sing their song for the 10 millionth time. Why did they do it to us? Yeah. You know, yeah. so I sound like I'm really bitching, but I actually am, but I'm very <laughs> nice about it. I'm, I want I'm you sure guys to get it. I'm sure George Benson's family and friends go, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Exactly. <laughs> but but it's 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 yeah. yeah it's what it is. I'm so surprised you said the song you did with Mark Lottering. Yeah. I'm so actually quite disgusted that radio stations didn't pick it up, especially because of the message of the song. Yeah. Look, I mean, Mark and I had talked about collaborating some years ago, and when yeah. it finally happened, he didn't even have me in mind. He had someone else in mind, and mm -hmm. he happened to be popping in at a friend's, and she said, "What have you been up to?" And he says, oh, "I've been in the studio just laying down this track." And she said, you can have a listen. Mm. And she did, and she's like, oh, you know, there's only one person who can sing your song, and she mentioned my name. And he goes, oh, he says, Vijay Vicky, my heart had amper straight geraakt. <laughs> like it's super struck. <laughs> I couldn't believe that I never thought <coughs> of it. So yeah. the song then became what it did, and we did yeah. the video, and it had that whole background of abuse, you mm. know, and women not having a voice, not being able to speak up about it. And, and, and across the board, gender-based yeah. related. Yeah. So for me, it was a proud moment to, and it's a great song. Maybe it will take song. a one We're day in the future. Watching but at home, where can we get it? Well, it's, on, it's available on iTunes, it's available on, on, on Spotify, it's yeah. available on Deezer, I'm sure. The, and the video is available on YouTube. Nice. It, this isn't enough, it's called This Isn't Enough. Yeah. The video is available. Um, and, and to be honest, um, I'm about to launch my, we're calling it my follow-up to my African dream. So there we go, guys. Yeah. We'll be happy now. It's, it's officially been dropped now. Officially. <laughs> yeah. Officially, but unofficially. On the 12th of February, um, the song, Song of Love, composed by Miss Nini Schlechter, my best friend, my sister, my Vi queen. She wrote the song for me, and it's used as a campaign song for a project called Walk for Love Africa, oh, yeah. uh, which will be launched on the 12th of Feb around Africa. There are 16 countries on board. It's a walk towards Africa, coming into Africa, uniting, strengthening ourselves, loving one another, the message yeah. of um, also the, 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 the possibility of getting back, getting back our lives within the tourism and hospitality entry industry and aviation industry. So the man behind it is Tony Okokuchu. Mm -hmm. He's Nigerian, he's an aviator and it's his baby, so Song of Love will be launched officially on the 12th of February. We'll listen out for that yes. one. And it's happening at the waterfront. We're doing it at the waterfront, guys, so please come and join us. Nice. We are gonna take, in two minutes time, we're gonna take another uh, quick break, well, 15 minute break, um, so we could all get a little bit of air, we could stop glowing so much. <laughs> 
And uh, when we come back, Lenita, you have been very quiet. Yeah, you shall be yeah. in the hot seat. Oh, so all right, <laughs> all right. <laughs> so uh, get ready. Thank you so much. This is Fiona Fury and friends. Do stay tuned. Before you leave, ladies, could I have the pleasure of a um, an Instagram pic, yes. so that we can. Do hey, Mercedes. How can I help you? How about a car? For those who set fire to the sound, who cruise around town, just to cool things down.
back to Fiona Fury and friends. Kurt Schoonwright nearly didn't make it. Cutting it very fine. But that's cool. Keep us on our toes. Story Keep of my life. Story <laughs> of my life. <laughs> if you're just joining us, uh, welcome to Fiona Fury and friends. We're coming to you live from the Boca Creative Studio in Seapoint. It is very hot in Cape Town, so if we are glowing a little bit, sweating, whatever, we <laughs> that is why. And also, if you can hear a bit of a buzz in the background, it's because Cape Town, uh, Seapoint is obviously a very buzzy neighborhood. My guest this evening, if you are just tuning in, the sensational Vicky Sampson. Yeah. Funny man, Kurt Skernrad. And multi-award winning oh, actress, <laughs> voice coach, voice artist, <laughs> producer, Lenita <laughs> uh, Crawford. Lenita, I promised you were going to be in the hot seat when you okay. came back. Because hot, literally hot. These two, yes. literally hot. I'm stuck to, I'm stuck to the seat. But um, I want to talk about Gertrude Stein and Companion. The mm. It's an incredible play and it must be, it's obviously two very strong women. Yes. I want to talk about the creative process yeah. into doing a play like this and how tricky it is on stage to, to perform these characters. Yeah, so th the play is quite complex because it spans a number of years. So it, it sort of starts uh, in the present and then goes back to the past and then the present and the past. So my character, Alice B. Turkless, has to age. She goes from being 60 to 90 to 30 to 60. And we, we don't have time to go off stage wow. and put on makeup and wigs and stuff mm, like that. Yeah. So it's just a physicality that you have yeah. to use to, yeah. to, suggest, to suggest the aging. But I think what the, the production itself is fascinating because it is an incredible time in Paris when this creative hub of people came together. You had Picasso and Matisse and Ernest Hemingway. And they were all together. And then you had this American woman coming from, well, American woman come, came to live in Paris, Gertrude Stein, mm -hmm. and she was a wealthy Jewish lady who ran the salon for all these famous artists and people, and a lot of creativity took place there, and along came Alice B. Toklas, who fell in love with her, and they became this incredible pair, remarkable women in a time when women weren't together, mm -hmm. and what is most remarkable about, it's a love story. And it doesn't matter between what people it is, but it's about companionship and love and how Alice supported this creative powerhouse, Gertrude Stein. And through her, uh, her works, were, Gertrude's works were published, but she would never have achieved the fame that she did were it not for Alice B. Toklas. And I think, yeah. you know, behind any creative person, there's somebody who's yeah. got their back, who's, who's yeah. there. Indeed. So it's Absolutely. this beautiful relationship between these two people. Um, Set it, got this backdrop set in Paris. Uh, and then also our director, Christopher Weir, has put in the most amazing music mm -hmm. that oh he's put in of the time. You know, So in yeah. between the different scenes, as we sort of go from one scene to the other, the changes, there's fabulous music, and then of course the great pictures that are used. So it's a beautiful, rich, creative evening's entertainment about uh, the story about these uh, incredible women. Would you think of putting it on film because I feel like I want to watch it as well. Uh, it feels like a Netflix special. Well, I don't think we would I don't think we uh, well, I don't think we would do it because it's an yeah. American story essentially. It's not a South African story, but yeah. it has been done. I think it, there is a movie already out there somewhere on YouTube, on YouTube. about them, but uh, yeah. not uh, not uh, not with us. So, ours is just the stage version of it. Yeah. Yes. Now, Theatre on the Bay. Theatre on the Bay is here in Cape if you are here in Cape Town. It's in Camps Bay near the tidal pool <laughs> where you Lovely. swim probably. Where I swim. <laughs> And yes. I swim there too. <laughs> I do, I do swim. Do you? It's nice. I do. That like chilly morning yes. <laughs> swimming. What, um, so Camps Bay, if people are watching, you know, around the rest of the country, would you take it on tour again? Or? Well, we were doing it um, in Pater Noster, you know, up oh the yeah. west yeah. coast yeah. there, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for one night. Uh, I think it's the 26th or the 27th of February. Do they and have a theatre? They do. It's called oh. De Kulkamer. Yeah, and oh then yeah. a lot of musicians perform there. Like yeah. a Kaur, like a Manda Stradom, yeah, and a whole lot of people perform yeah. there. A watershed, and so they do, do uh, are introducing yeah, theatre as well. So yeah. Oh nice. So we're doing it up there, but mm. Theatre on the Bay from the third of February to the fifth. So you've got four nights to come and check it out. You so can book on compu tic tickets book or yeah. through the Theatre on the Bay, and it starts at eight o'clock. What else? Because I always talk, you know, about well, not always. When I was introducing you, I was like, okay, well, this is the long list. <laughs> <laughs> of things that you do because you yeah. really are an 
a stunning all-rounder when it well, comes to... I think, you know, to make a living in this country, you've got to do a lot of things, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's <laughs> true. So, yeah. although your passion might be the theatre or acting, but if you yeah. want to make a living, you've got it, because there isn't always work, and especially yeah. through lockdown. So, yes, I also coach... And I also work as a newsreader on radio stations. Yes, <laughs> Magic, H O H. Yes. And uh, all sorts of things, you know. And I, yeah. um, obviously, I also do, uh, I'm in going to sh shortly be filming some episodes of Arden's Play oh. coming up oh. soon. Nice. Yeah, so, um, yes, I have. I you didn't know. know you speak Afrikaans. Yeah. Oh, am I <laughs> the only person? <laughs> <laughs> I come from, I come oh. from Pretoria. Oh. Oh. Am I the only person who doesn't cut? Tata is not Afrikaans. You are. The rest of us were just like, meh. No. Well, that's why I was saying, you know, when things get... Uti. When things get lost in translation, because I'm, you know, originally Irish, so there's things when, you know, I was laughing earlier when you were saying at your show things get lost in translation. Years and years and years ago, I was dating an Afrikaans person, a dude. Um, and in Ireland, if there's a saying, if you've got, you know, like a salty face, you know, don't be such a sourpuss. Yeah. Yeah. And I said it to him one day after an argument. <laughs> he's like, he's <laughs> from Cape Town. <laughs> Let me guess. Okay. With the Afrikaans, I say, what did you know? <laughs> I was like, no, he's such a sourpuss. And he was like, <gasps> you call me a puss. I was like, yeah, it's a sourpuss. <laughs> And I still didn't know back. Ooh. I was like, yes. There's a lost in translation one <laughs> right yes, there. Absolutely. Yes. So, yes, it's our person. He was like, anyway, was it, didn't, it didn't go down. I'm not even going to tell you. <laughs> it did not go. Not surname, just first name. No. <laughs> so you I'm gonna okay, I'm going to take it. I'm just going to take an odd one and say, okay. listen, yeah, well, let us, let me explain to you now what, what, yeah. <laughs> what this means. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nothing more, nothing less. I'm being given signs. Artist Ruth <laughs> Nolan is going to be at Boca. Artist Ruth Nolan is going to be at Boca. I'm getting signs to say okay. from our director. Ruth no is Ruth Nolan a singer? Maybe. Oh, he's disappeared now. Well, maybe she's a fine artist who will be here on yeah. Thursday because normally they're art artist exhibitions on Thursday. On Thursday. Uh, oh, behind sorry, us. Sorry, that's me oh, having a blonde okay. moment. Artist Ruth Nolan. I thought you meant it's a singer coming on. I'm not wearing my glasses. I couldn't read the sign. <laughs> wow. She's nearly so 50, you know. I'm she nearly can't 50. Read the sign. <laughs> <laughs> she said it. Yeah, that just came back and put you on the Jackson. No, 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 no. Yes, I am nearly 50, you know. It's not, hey, just, it's not just the sweating. I forgot 50. the first part. It's 50 hey, related. punk. Hey, punk. <laughs> I am Almost nearly 50. I am nearly 50 punks. <laughs> but this is Lucky. beautiful artwork by Ruth Nolan. And Adrian here, who owns the Boca Creative uh, Studio here in Seapoint, does beautiful art exhibitions every Thursday. A new one. There we go. I have been told. <laughs> I have been told by the director. Kurt, yes. speaking of venues, yes. you am I allowed to am I allowed to ask? You are allowed to ask, about it. we kind of, it's, it's unofficial at the moment. We're going to be the first to hear. Well, um, you know, the, the, the comedy club at the waterfront didn't survive COVID. Um, very early on in the, um, when, when things struck, we realized that this is not going to be a short-term thing. And um, it was only fair that we let our landlords know that um, we're going to be stepping back from this particular lease situation. And um, so we did. Um, I am, however, I... We went looking for a venue over the last couple of months um, because inevitably there will be a big demand for co comedy again and we need to present it in a space that is appropriate for it. Well lit, good sound, etc., etc. And um, it's, you know, I c I'm pretty sure everyone understands that comedy has taken a huge knock over the last two years. Yeah. And I'm uh, pleased to say that I have found an unbelievable venue. Yeah. Um, it's an, all, all I can say at the moment, it's an old 30s theater that hasn't been used for like 50 years. Is Whoa. it in Woodstock? It's not in we Woodstock. Also, I'm, I'm just guessing well. now. It's not in Woodstock. <laughs> it's, yeah. It is in a bit of an underground space, and Cape Town's mm. always had this culture of an underground room where a creative, really creative things happen. I don't think it will be an exclusively stand-up or comedy venue anymore. Okay. Um, okay. I do think it will be a music-comedy yeah. hybrid 
I think they share similar audiences anyways. Yeah. And um, I, d- I do think we've got enough of a, um, a demand for the product if we get the right room. Would this you like Gertrude Stein there? Yeah, we would definitely do. We would definitely do some, th- uh, so some, some theater. theater stuff yeah. as well. Um, Excellent. It's, a, it's an old theater which has a lot of different stages. So it won't just be one. There's a bigger stage, a smaller stage. Oh, wow. Um, so it'll be a bit of a, a, a space where creatives can get together Lovely. and Sounds showcase amazing. their, their, yeah. their stuff. Yeah. Um, it's in a space where you wouldn't, in, you wouldn't think it would be. Hmm. Why you can't you just tell us? <laughs> I, I don't know what's in it. I'm still in a lease yeah. negotiation at the moment, so I don't want to let the cat out the bag too, yeah. too early. But what it is, is it's just this beautiful old Art Deco building, yeah. and the stage has not been touched in Is it in years. the northern suburbs or the southern it's suburbs? It's in the southern suburbs. <laughs> okay. It hasn't been touched in a long time. See, Vicky's mind is... Mm. this venue, <laughs> and this beautiful room emerged from the back of a warehouse somewhere. So it's going to take quite a bit of renovation to get it up and it's running. It's not the three arts, is it? No, it's not. That's the a shopping centre now. Yeah. Yeah. That's sad. I know. Unfortunately, it's going to I, I've got a, a very soft spot for... Is it close to the three arts? Uh, no, it's not <laughs> close to the three arts at all. I, I saw three. Shirley Bassey at the three arts. That's how old I am. <laughs> I saw John, 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 Johnny Mathis Craig? there. Johnny Mathis. Oh, right. Jeez. Yeah. I saw oh, In Excess dad. there. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> you went... Really? <laughs> wow. I saw Smashing Pumpkins there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. They were the three, three arts were functioning when yeah. Smashing Pumpkins. Anyway, wow. uh, so there's, there's, there's a great opportunity here to bring a bit of um, the performing arts, particularly music and stand-up, back into space. Yeah. And there will, there's, a, there's a smaller stage um, that seats about 120 people that would be perfect for a theatre space. Mm. Yeah. Um, but we, it's, it's all... It's, I've, I've got two partners that are that are going to co-fund this with me. Mm. And um, I'm hoping to, to get something out of the starting block by about July, August this year. Well That's fantastic. Done. I well think well it's well so well. neat. I mean, there's so many places have closed down. So for artists, I mean, Vicky, Lenita, so many people who are looking for places to yeah. to put on their shows yeah. Yeah. Um, that now don't have those venues, it's, it's really exciting. It is. You know, we've yeah. lost so many venues in Cape Town. Yeah. The Fugard Theatre. Gone. Yeah. 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 Case in point, yeah. is a huge loss to yeah. this yeah. To the city, um, and they've been custodians of the performing arts in all yeah. shapes and sizes, singers and yeah. stand-ups yeah. and actors, um, actors uh, across the board. Yeah. For us to have lost that, yeah. I don't think Cape Town actually realizes just how much it's lost just yet. Yeah. That is a huge loss. Um, the loss of the comedy club, I think, is also a loss. I'm a little biased on that particular one. No, I was very but sad about that. Yeah. But there is, there's, there's a a metamorphosis today, yeah. you know, it's like anything else. There's yeah. a renewal process, a phoenix, yeah. as you were, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, as it were, to that, that will emerge from all of this disaster mm. that we've experienced over the last two years. And I'll be very happy and lucky to be involved in helping that along. Um, I really look well, forward well to it. Well done. Brilliant. Well yeah. done. Awesome. Yeah. Well, funny, and you just, you, j- you just mentioned the word, you just mentioned the word phoenix. And funnily enough, I can give something away about Song of Love. My second verse starts with, like a phoenix, we will rise from the ashes and oh the mines. Wow. How's that for serendipity? That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, and I think that's actually a really nice way to wrap up the show on such a, hu- on a, a positive note. Before we wrap up, I'm just going to go through everyone and say where, Vicky, we can see music videos on... YouTube, YouTube yes. and people buy buy South African artists' work. We can buy all your new, um, new your material. new material on 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 Spotify, Deezer. I don't even know <coughs> some of these things. Okay. I like just, but yeah, I'm busy vinyl negotiating. making a comeback. Vinyl CD, please, wouldn't that be lovely? That would be lovely, you know. But, but yeah, I think we. W- I'm also in the process of signing a distribution deal for the new material that's coming out because. I will also be releasing my first Afrikaans song. Yeah. You were saying? In the next two, three months, yeah. Five days for you, right? Yeah. With Apsa, yeah. And with your samenwerking from Anna Kwanza. So that's very exciting. But on the 12th of February, of course, we have the Walk, uh, Walk of Love for Africa campaign kicking off at the waterfront. Um, yeah. And social media, can people follow you? Social media, I'm, I'm on, on Facebook. Facebook. I'm on Facebook. Uh, there's some stuff on Twitter. I know I'm not on Twitter myself. Yeah. 
it's just too much for me. Yeah. Um, but I'm on Instagram and I'm on Facebook, and Facebook. And, and so on. Yeah. So we can follow for up for updates on Vicky Sampson and your website. And my website, www.vickysampson.com, yeah. Very good. Kurt Skunrad, where can we find you? Um, well, there's, there's, there's some new stand-up stuff happening in and around Cape Town. Um, I'm not sure exactly of where they are exactly just yet, but keep an eye out on the stand-up space. Please come and support the stand-ups. You can watch whoa, new whoa. material on um, Showmax, and you can watch um, Tali's Baby Diary. Tali's Baby Diary, you're on right. Net, also on uh, Showmax, I think, sorry. And if you haven't watched Scheme yet, I would highly recommend Scheme. you go and, and watch Scheme. It is a fabulous South African movie that I was uh, very lucky to be involved with a few years ago. And that's gotten some really great reviews from outside of South Africa. I'm very proud of it. If you can, it's on Netflix. It's called SKWEM Scheme. Mm, okay. And um, other than that, keep a Stuart Taylor's mixtape. Mixtape, which is also on YouTube. Um, I got to host one of the episodes on the mixtape. But other than that, just keep an eye out for the new venue. Yes. Woo. Yes. Yes. And uh, social pages? Social pages. I'm on Instagram, on Facebook, just Kurt Oskunar, and uh, you can touch base with us there. Interact. Don't forget to like and you know, tune us once, twice, <laughs> and what you think, and <laughs> all of that. Cheers. Only if it's good. Only yeah. if, no, even if it's not, it's cool. We've got to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Skomal Deluxe. Good. All right, thanks. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Lenita? Yes, Theatre on the Bay, the 3rd to the 5th of February mm -hmm. at 8 o'clock. Yeah, and Gertrude Stein and a companion. And any social people want to follow you on social? Well, Kurt and I just had a moment here because <laughs> I didn't know what my Instagram. You <laughs> <laughs> <thing was laughs> were trying to track each other down. Like, what are you? It's Crawford underscore. Why did I choose that? I don't know, but it's Crawford <laughs> underscore. Uh, and yeah, on Facebook you'll just find me under Lenita Crawford, and on Twitter I think it's also just Lenita Crawford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cool. We thank you Blonde, very much. Also Blonde 50 <laughs> over 50. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much to all my guests. It's been so nice having you on Thank you for this having evening's us. show. Thanks for having us. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, Boca Creative Studio, as usual. Please come on Thursdays if you are in Cape Town to look at the beautiful, magnificent art. And don't forget, we actually now, the show finally has an Instagram page. So follow us on Insta and a YouTube page. Like, subscribe, all the rest. You know what to do. I'll see you next week. Thank you for watching. Woo